Good morning and welcome. Our purpose today is to pierce through the fog of blog posts to understand uh, where we are at this moment in time, what's happening and what's possible for the future of the social web. The social web is being defined by entrepreneurs, and my favorite definition of entrepreneurs is they do more than anyone thinks possible with less than anyone thinks possible, more than anyone thinks possible with less than anyone thinks possible. And if there's any message from today's conversation, it's that it's the entrepreneurs who are going to be reimagining and redefining the social web. There's never been a better time than now for entrepreneurs to build great new transformative social web services. What's exciting about this moment is it's the start of a third great wave of innovation. I like to say the first wave of innovation was in the 1980s with the microchip and the PC. The second wave in the mid-90s, the internet and the web browser. And today the third wave is based on the convergence of mobile and social and cloud computing. Each of these waves transformed everything. They were uh, tsunamis of change, and they create enormous opportunity for entrepreneurs. The best way to get going about this is to tell you about four social ventures that we funded in the last six months. The first, which is being announced today, that's coming out of stealth, is a venture called Cafe Bots, uh, founded by uh, Stanford's distinguished professor of multi-agent systems and computer science, it's Professor Yoav Shoem. And what he and four PhDs are doing at Stanford is uh, creating uh, powerful agents and services that can uh, do your bidding on Facebook, helping you uh, relate better to your, your friends, have uh, more fun and more productive relationships. That's Cafe Bots. Another great social venture you, you probably heard of, and that's a Flipboard founded by Mike McHugh. What Flipboard is, is the world's first social magazine. Now notice, they uh, take feeds from Facebook and from Twitter and in real time produce for you a customized, personalized, uh, gorgeous social magazine of, that's drenched in rich photos and uh, uh, tailored to whatever your interests are. Uh, Flipboard from Mike McHugh. A third example that you may not have heard of is uh, just around the corner from Flipboard in Palo Alto. It's called Jive Software. And Jive is the leading provider of uh, social applications for enterprises. They're today serving 15 million customers through 3,000 enterprise customers, and they help network the knowledge inside a company and also let a company serve its customers better. That's uh, Jive Software. A fourth new social venture is uh, Lockers in Seattle, founded by Kathy Savitz, an alumnus of Amazon. Lockers is targeting uh, teens to young adults, uh, men and women from ages 13 to 30. They hope to be the home page, uh, providing uh, new ways to shop, uh, share media, and, uh, and communicate, uh, earning points, P-O-I-N-T-Z. And they're growing like crazy. In just the last year, they've got 17 uh, million members. Now, I'm out of that age range, but I was able to use this service to get a great deal on designer jeans. What these ventures are doing, and others, is uh, reimagining and reinventing the web. They're taking it from the internet to a new rich kind of social web. We're going from an internet of documents and pages to a web of people and places and relationships, from standalone computers to all kinds of devices. We're going from information and transactions to sharing recommendations and experiences. They're defining the future, and it's incredibly exciting. Alan Kay, the chief scientist at Xerox Park, is famous for saying, the best way to predict the future is to invent it. What Kleiner Perkins, we like to say, if you can't invent the future, the next best thing you can do is to fund it. So today, we're announcing the S Fund, a social fund of $250 million focused on the entrepreneurs who want to imagine and create great services and applications on the social web. Since it's a social fund, think of it as if it's a quarter billion dollar party among friends who want to shape the future. We're joined in this fund by uh, three fantastic co-investors, uh, uh, Facebook, Amazon.com, and uh, Zynga, uh, together with uh, uh, three uh, leaders in, in media, the uh, uh, Comcast company, uh, Liberty Media, 
in Allen and Company. I think today's announcement is a really very big deal. It uh, underscores the commitment of Facebook to be uh, the world's leading social platform for innovation. The commitment that Amazon.com has to advance web services and to Zynga to be uh, an example and an advisor to entrepreneurs who want to build great big social services on the net these networks as they have with uh, Farmville, Mafia Wars, and their many other games. To discuss this fun and the future of social computing, let's uh, turn to each of them. We've got, I think, the world's most amazing entrepreneurs on stage. And, and so I want to ask them a couple of questions and then entertain your questions. I'd love to start with uh, Zuck. Mark, thank you for hosting us here. Uh, certainly Facebook established the importance of the social web. Uh, why are you here, besides the fact you work here, <laughs> and, <laughs> and what do you hope is going to happen <laughs> because of this social fund? Well, so our view for the next few years is we just think that every industry is going to get fundamentally rethought and designed around people. Right? When we look at some of the things that we've built internally at Facebook, uh, applications like photos early on, that it, early on it was just a team of a few people who, who knocked that out. The thing that made it succeed early on was that it had deeper social integration than any other product, right? And there were already products out there that had um, high resolution photos and printing and all these things. And we've added those over the last five years. But the thing that made our photos product five or six times more used than I think every other photos product combined on the rest of the web was because it had very deep social integration. Um, same thing with the, the first version of groups and the first version of events. And what we decided to do is we, we figured you know, we could try to take a cut at all these different things with a team of three people, which isn't obviously going to scale very well, or we could build this platform and make it so great entrepreneurs can build entire companies that are built around people. And um, some of the examples that, that we have here, I mean, Mark is sitting next to me, I and mean, the, the game stuff that's happened on platforms so far is, is amazing, right? I mean, just how disruptive that's been to the games industry and transformative. I, I mean, Zynga is, is a great example of this. There are other game companies that are doing quite well, too. But what they fundamentally have is they're games that are not just, that they're not, you're not just playing them with your friends. They're fundamentally designed to, um, around social interactions. I mean, you can talk more about this, but... One of the things that a lot of great platforms, it seems like, ha have seen is that games have been an early adopter, right? So whether it's um, the iPhone or iPad platforms, um, or even you know PCs early on before that, um, a, a lot of these platforms have seen games be one of the, the first um, industries to really take off on their platforms. And we just expect that over the next uh, five years or so, a lot of different industries are going to get um, good new social versions of, the, of their products rethought. And um, I think that this fund is going to be a great way to help fund a lot of that. Yeah, so, so, so what, do you hope, what do you hope this fund says to entrepreneurs and does for entrepreneurs that matters to you? Well, I think just having a, a firm like you guys that is so well respected in predicting what the future waves of technology and products are going to be um, is really powerful for encouraging entrepreneurs to go invest in this area that we believe deeply in as well. Right. It's also going to make it easier for them to make companies because now they're going to have your resources and your advice and that's going to, that's going to really help them. Right? Right. Um, and I, I think that's really so if you were just now, go back in time, if you were just abandoning Harvard to do a great new thing, what would be the new social service or venture that would inspire you? I don't know. I mean, I think that there's going to be an opportunity over the next five years or so to pick any industry and rethink it in a social way. So, I mean, me personally, I mean, I'm, I'm really interested in communication and, and kind of understanding who people are. So I, mean, I guess that's why I originally started developing Facebook. I also, um, but, but I really think like you could take almost any passion and map it to an industry mm -hmm. that will probably be disrupted in the next five years. Do you want to talk about some of the special things that Facebook is doing besides investing in this money in the social fund to work together with these entrepreneurs, or do you want me to cover Sure. I mean, uh, well, we have this whole platform program, and a lot of, uh, I mean, it's kind of what I was saying just a, a moment ago, where we decided a few years ago that our best path for building all these social products was actually not to build them ourselves, but to instead invest in, uh, in a platform and help um, our partners and people who are building on top of that um, build out these great applications, right? So whether it's um, helping people use programs that aren't fully rolled out, like credits or instant personalization, um, or just 
uh, helping them with support, building on top of the existing platforms that we have, like Connect outside of Facebook.com and the Canvas platform inside of Facebook.com. Um, I mean, really, any time that there's a great entrepreneur and a great product that, that we believe in, and we, it's, it's thank you. Um, it's well worth our time to, to invest in helping those entrepreneurs build out great companies. Fantastic. From Mark to Mark. Mark, you've proven you can build enormous enterprises on the Facebook ecosystem, on their, on, on their uh, platform. Fastest growing company that we've ever invested in. What is it about this time, this moment in time, that makes it so great for entrepreneurs? Um, I'd say that I think that we are at this this point in time where there, there's there's so many uh, platform changes and disruptions that are happening all all at once that first of all there there's a, a, a complete new consumer behavior and experience that is uh, happening changing in front of our eyes around um, apps and social where, where like Mark saying um, we are starting to build new expectations of of what a service should be like and it should be logged in it should know you that's that's new for the web it used to be anonymous and public and it should uh, I, I think this paradigm that was lost from the PC to the web of you as a user choosing applications, owning them, feeling a sense of connection and ownership was lost when you just had a relationship with a website that, that looked and acted the same. So, so I, think, I think to Mark's point, um, it's, it's, it's changed so fast that entrepreneurs, it's probably one of the few times in history when venture capitalists and entrepreneurs are behind the curve, that there's services that seem kind of obvious that, so, that so, don't exist. So what are some of those? Where do you see holes or places people ought to innovate or we ought to invest your yeah, valuable, well, valuable funds? <laughs> I, I think they're on both sides. They're consumer facing and they're infrastructure. On the consumer facing side, I personally, I'm just bugged that there isn't a great travel service. I mean, why don't I have an app um, that I can have on my iPhone or, or Android or Blackberry that knows I'm at the airport, it knows my flight is canceled, um, it knows I'm traveling with somebody and it's already recommending you know, the, the next option and it would be sure nice if it also recommended a game I could play in the meantime. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or maybe some great books you could buy. Or great books you could yeah, buy. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then on the infrastructure side, um, and we'd be happy to partner with that company. Uh, <laughs> on, on the infrastructure side, uh, I've seen that there's one example already that I think would have been a great S fund company had you existed, um, where Kadir, our CTO, had we as we've tried to scale um, in the first few years we hit these. Pro I didn't know what memcache was, but I had to learn because we had to keep getting these memcache servers and spending all this money, and and Kadir came upon this group that was already building this open source project to fix that. And rather than build it ourselves, we decided to help them and invest in them, and they formed a company that's now called Membase. So that was one example. Uh -huh. And the second is one that we hope you will fund a company in. So we'll lay down the challenge to you. We hope that someone will reinvent customer support for all of us, because I, I, I'm sure it's similar for Facebook. We're entering this new world where we're offering a free service but the consumer expectation about the support around that service is it's been built by Amazon where they're a paying customer. So, so they, why, I can't believe that it takes you 72 hours you know, to, to respond. And we, we've had to rely on outsourcers for that support for years. And despite spending millions, it's been so hard to satisfy our customers. We finally brought some of it in house just to see how good we could get and we brought our customer satisfaction into the mid 80s percentile and so so i'll just say we don't want to be in that business and and have 
thousands of customer support agents, and we, we don't want to build that technology, and, and we hope someone else does. Well, I want to connect you with Jive before this ends, because it's exactly the kind of stuff they do, so yeah. we're on your program. One final question, kind of personal. What is it that's uh, helped you the most or inspired you in your journey to be a CEO of this amazing company? Well, I, I think that the big theme for me has been learning how to operate at scale and, and learning how to be a CEO at scale. And, and I'd say hopefully for more companies in your fund, since we'll be an investor, um, you'll, they'll experience that same challenge. And I think the thing that's helped me most is seeking out coaches and advisors and, and mentors. And I'd say without uh, embarrassing Jeff, uh, the, the person that I've looked to most for CEO advice has been little installments, these little chapters I get whenever I see Jeff on uh, kind of these CEO moments. And, and I take them really seriously. And the most recent was um, this summer I asked Jeff, how, I, how do you learn to, to grow as a CEO at scale? And he said, you go and hire people who've been in those positions before at scale and then you hope that you can learn from them and, and keep up with them. And so we took that to heart and we've added a bunch of world-class people like Dave Weiner and Owen Venata. And now I have teachers for the next couple of years. So. Right. And Owen is an alumnus of both Amazon and Facebook, yeah. right? So the connections here are uh, really close. Uh, Jeff, that really brings me to uh, some terrific things you can offer us. And if you were advising these new social entrepreneurs, about what mattered most when you started Amazon. What, what would you tell them? Well, the, the most important advice to give any social entrepreneurs would be use Amazon Web Services. Okay, good. <laughs> That's the, let's get that on the table right there. And, and, and why, why am I excited about the S Fund? Yeah. Because I'm hopeful that uh, most of that $250 million will be spent on Amazon Web <laughs> Services. So <clears throat> a lot of uh, reasons to be excited. Um, the, the, uh, we, we have, uh, you know, these viral applications. These social apps do tend to be very viral. I mean, it's kind of built into the nature of the app. And so when they hit, they hit fast. They can grow violently. And that really does play to the strengths of AWS and EC2, the Elastic Compute Cloud, because, you know, it it's both scales up and it scales down. It's elastic. There's no CapEx. There's no variable cost. Mm -hmm. And so it re it's all variable cost. I mean, it's no capex. It's all variable cost. So that is really a uh, and uh, all three of the top three Facebook uh, Facebook development companies, all the developers for Facebook, the top three are using AWS quite extensively. So it's a big sure. deal. And by the way, thank you for the business. It's, See, um, you, you, <laughs> we, we couldn't have. There's no way we could have scaled. I mean, there, there is. We just talked about this yesterday. There's. No way that we could have scaled Farmville if we weren't on AWS. Well, no question. I thought about renaming AWS Bill. AWS Bill. These guys are a great example of truly heroic growth. I mean, you know, it's incredible and in, uh, what, what, how quickly it's almost like, you know, an impurity dropping into a super saturated solution or something. The whole <laughs> thing just. A Cambrian, a Cambrian explosion. It's it, it's 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 a very interesting uh, phenomenon. So, uh, and it, I think it's because you have this very rich nutrient solution of people who are all connected already, and so you can layer on a game or some other kind of social app that is viral, and it can just grow very very quickly. You don't need a lot of traditional marketing to get those things to grow. So, so beyond using Amazon Web Services, do you have any other advice? No, that's it. <laughs> that's the only advice I have. Um, everything else is, uh, you know, doesn't really matter pa very pales much. Pales in comparison. Pales in comparison. How about advice for investors who are trying to serve entrepreneurs? We get there. Since since we're an investor in the iFund, my my main advice to to you would be make sure we get a damn good ROI. All right. You know, <laughs> I, I, I invest that money well. Um, well, you know, my advice to entrepreneurs, especially if you, you know, people getting started, is uh, do pick an area you're passionate about. If I were coming out of school today. I think I would be very passionate about um, uh, genetic engineering, synthetic life. I think these are incredible on, areas on, where... On, on social networks. Oh, you want a specific social no, network no, no, answer? Genetic life on social no, networks. No, I'm thinking of like, you know, test tubes and, right. uh, and, and, and engineering real Bugs, biological drugs. organisms yeah. 
to solve clean energy and a whole bunch of other interesting issues. So, you know, I think it's fun to work in golden ages. And, you know, uh, and, and there have been many golden ages. You know, you could have been in the golden age of TV, you know, back in the 1950s. Talking and you, pictures. Right. You know, there, and, and, you know, the golden age of aviation and so on and so on. And uh, this probably is the golden age of social apps. You know, we're probably on the leading edge of it. But if I were getting started today, I'd be a little bit more in the future. Right. And uh, I'd think about, I think we're right on the edge of being able to do incredible things with engineered and synthetic life. It's very exciting. I'm not done talking about AWS, though. If we could, <laughs> if, if we could get back to that, you know, we, we do we, have... We will. We'll be able to. Right, <laughs> after, right after we hear from the entrepreneur, Bing Gordon, who I met 30 years ago at the founding of Electronic Arts, and he was their chief creative officer for decades. And then you joined the board at Amazon.com and it contributed there enormously. And he's leading this S fund and this effort. So, Bing, where are we in terms of social web, social services? Well, the, the, the first thing is it's pretty cool to be on stage with the four of you. So I've had, I've had major learning with each of you. And, uh, oh, and Zuck, the, um, when the platform got announced, it, uh, it was like an epiphany for me. Um, I never imagined that a, um, an entertainment platform wouldn't have specialized silicon in it. And so it just blew me away. So that's kind of, uh, <laughs> as a parent of kids, you'll learn this one day, and Mark just learned this, but as a parent of kids, history begins uh, when your kids are born. And I think the, uh, the history of media re-began when, uh, when platform was launched. So um, um, even so, I think social is just beginning. And here's why. Yeah, I think we got about a billion and a quarter people worldwide who are uh, monthly social network uniques right now. I think in five years it's going to be four billion. I think we're, uh, the power of social networks is so strong. It's frictionless human capital or capital, uh, social capital building. I think the average friend count in five years is going to go from 125 to 500. I think the number of posts per day, you'd know the exact number, but I think it's going to go from 1 to 10 as um, uh, Connect takes your, your friends' faces to every web page you go to. Um, and I think people's uh, engagement on uh, social graph daily is going to go from 15 minutes. People who are on Zynga games are uh, much higher than an average of 15 minutes. I think we're going to see 30 minutes to an hour per day per person uh, connected to social. And it's because uh, um, you can't see your friends' faces when you watch TV. So, so we're just getting started. Then, John, I can't remember if you mentioned, but I want to mention our three other founding members, our founding investors and uh, strategic partners in the S Fund. Would you put up the list of S Fund investors again? Because I was going to get around to that. But you could do that now. We've got some real media giants with us, right? Thanks. So uh, uh, Comcast is which, which offers the best conduit of uh, media. Broadcast. Uh, broadband media to audience um, is a great strategic partner. Liberty Media uh, looks to us like the um, the traditional media company that both both best understands the internet and uh, new social commerce. And Allen and Company we think is the best connector and uh, financial advisor for um, uh, new media companies. We have great experience with Allen and Company. So uh, joining us today from uh, those companies is uh, Michael Yang from Comcast and Ian Smith of Allen and Company. Would you guys stand up because we're going to get right into questions. Thanks for joining us and being part of this fun. So before we go to questions from the press, I've got uh, one more question for the entire group, and that is uh, look forward five years from now. What's going to just make you delighted about the customers you serve and social as a phenomenon? Any, all, hopefully one of you, talk about well, five years from now. The, um, the, most exciting, uh, the most exciting part of the social graph is uh, when members of your family post something. Uh -huh. uh, I have daughters in college 3,000 miles away. Uh, when they post something and they haven't blocked me to it, it's, um, it's a day maker. So, um, um, Mark Pincus, in about five years, your kids are going to be on Facebook Junior, and uh, you're going to be negotiating with them to be a, a friend with privileges. 
and it um, it it changes everything. Um, I hadn't thought about my own kids on Facebook yet. Um, <laughs> they're 12 weeks. So it's, I have time. I've, hopefully, I have some time. <laughs> Less Mark has any announcements about changing the minimum age. Uh, I think what excites me most is so much of our time right now is spent um, getting the network wired, getting everybody ha to have an account and to figure out how to connect the accounts. And, and in five years, just like if, if you think in 1995 and 1996, we were figuring out how to download and install a browser and how do you make sure you can connect from any ISP. And, and that's where we are right now with this. And I think in five years, when everybody is always connected to each other instead of always connected to the web, I think it's going to be so frictionless that I think of these services as dial tones. And I think Facebook is the, the social dial tone beneath all of it. And I think on top of Facebook, you're going to have these verticalized dial tones that I could imagine Pandora is al already my music dial tone. We hope to be your social gaming dial tone. I'm certain that Amazon will be my shopping dial tone. So I, I think from a, a seamless user experience standpoint, um, there, there's people will not be able to remember a time before life was like that. Just like we don't remember time, I think, before Blackberries and iPhones now. Mark? Five years. The thing that I'm excited about five years out is just like a, a lot of people who are just getting started building social apps now are going to be at scale by then, right? And there's a class of applications that we're really capable of building at Facebook that mostly involve sharing information, right? Um, stuff like the newsfeed or profile or groups or photos. But a lot of the great companies that I think are going to get built require DNA that's very specialized to a different area, right? So games, for example, like I don't think that Facebook could ever make games, right? So what we're doing together I think is really powerful because it takes what we can do and bundles that up and, and, and package that in a way that now a company that has very deep DNA in games um, can, can make that. Um, and can do something that has this social fabric from kind of its inception, right? And that, I think, is going to be true for a lot of areas, right? I mean, music company or movies, I mean, it's like, like companies that deal with that type of content, I think, are very different than, than Facebook, right? I don't think we're ever going to do that. Um, um, E-commerce is another example. It's like, I mean, we're not going to build warehouses, right? I mean, but, but, if, but if we work together or we work with other e-commerce companies, then um, I think you could deliver a very excellent um, social e-commerce product. And I think a lot of those things are just getting started now. And as fast as they, as they grow, and they, they do grow quickly because you just share it with your friends, and that's kind of baked into the nature of what these products are, um, it is going to take you know, a few years for these to reach hundreds of millions of users, which if social networking is where you predict that it's going to be in, in five years, which I mean, isn't that far off from what we hope, um, then, uh, then I think that it's going to take a few years. Um, we'll see. Um, dangerous to predict too far out. Um, then, then I think we'll see um, a lot of these things really start to blossom over that period of time. So I guess the thing that I'm most excited about is really what we're going to be able to do with partners and people building on top of platform that merges the DNA that's unique to some of these areas with um, people who are building social stuff from the ground up. And the other thing that I, that I would add to that, if, you, if I'm allowed to, but if you, if you want to cut me off, that's cool. We're your guest. Um, is uh, there's a wave of companies so far that have built some social stuff just as a kind of lightweight layer on top of their applications, right? So Connect right now, we have these social plugins that are very easy to drop in. You can make any website social. Um, but I think the thing that makes a lot of the, these best applications work, like, um, like what you guys are doing with gaming or you know, what we've done with, with groups or photos is, it is just fundamentally built into the product that, that it's social, right? And I think that there are going to be two types of companies that, that get built, ones that do something and just put some social stuff on top, and ones that get built kind of from the ground up to be social. And I think over the next few years, we're really going to see the ones that get built from the ground up to be social have a very fundamental advantage over the ones that are just slapping it on on top, checking the box, and think that they can move on from there. Um, so five years out, I think the world will, like these will have blossomed, and the world is going to look a lot more like, um, like Zynga, right, and, and, and the apps that we've built so far. Jeff? 
five years out? Uh, our contribution in that kind of five-year time frame is going to be empowering the kind of application developers that you're talking about that are going to come across you know, very horizontally. So we've got, you know, we have already hundreds of thousands of developers using AWS in 190 different countries. Um, S3 now has 200 billion data objects stored in it, and peak transaction rates on S3 is 197,000 transactions a second. Don't try that at home. Um, today we're announcing, an, it, it, actually the press release is kind of crossing the wire right now, we're announcing a new free tier for AWS where uh, we'll provide for any developer uh, who wants to try out AWS for the first time a uh, free EC2 instance for a year, along with some other uh, accoutrements like some S3 storage and so on. So I, I'm, I'm excited about in that five-year time frame empowering developers who are going to do these cool things across many different kind of verticals. And uh, Bing, there's some special relationships, aren't there, between these partners and investors and the entrepreneurs that are going to happen? You want to tell us about those and we'll go to questions? Yeah, Thanks, the, the, the first thing I'd say is, so I'm, I'm on, whoops, sorry, I'm, I'm on stage with um, uh, I mean, three of the best CEOs in the consumer internet today and maybe in the world today. And uh, uh, social is uh, going to be a future breeding ground of great CEOs, a combination of web analytics and uh, fast growth and social feedback is, is going to be a place for entrepreneurs to become great CEOs faster. So if you want to be a Bezos or Zuckerberg or Pincus, this is the place to get started. They're just faster learning uh, along the way. Now, John, what was your question? <laughs> I'm oh, the special prize. Oh, so I, I, I'm the, afraid the, to ask it again. <laughs> so the um, a lot. So what um, at Kleiner, what we try to do to help people become great CEOs. So if you want to build a company that's an internet treasure, guess what? You got to have a great CEO. Is to um, uh, bring advice, just in time advice from uh, the smartest people who tend to be your peers. Uh, I've never learned much from people older than me. So. Um, uh, learn from your peers, so we, uh, we bring CEOs together for symposiums uh, a couple times a year uh, to get uh, insider advice from people like uh, the gentleman on the stage today and, uh, and their teams. Uh, but the, the fastest learning is always from other CEOs. CEO is a really lonely job. <laughs> And unless you have someone like Sheryl Sandberg to keep you company, it's, it's bitterly lonely. So uh, if you can't get Sheryl Sandberg or Owen Van Natta um, in your camp, then it's nice to have friends who are on the same journey to be a great CEO. Thank you. That's great. So let's do this. Let's go to questions. And what I'm going to do is field them three at a time because our time's limited. And then uh, the obvious panel member will, will take them. Y you can direct them also if you want, and uh, we'll try to honor that. So uh, name and question, please. Hi, Miguel Half with the New York Times. Hey, Miguel. Um, John, you started, uh, I think, an iFund within year one of the app eco ecosystem on phones. Uh, back in the 90s, you started a Java fund early on in the Java days. Facebook is in its seventh year. There's been hundreds of investments in, uh, in social startups. What took you so long, and what, how is this going to change the investment climate for social, which has been an area that has seen a lot of investment, obviously. Thank you very much. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to get three up here, and then we'll handle them. Hey, yes. uh, my name is Eric Eldon with Inside Facebook, and I'm interested in how exactly you're going to draw the line between social and not so so social, considering that the like button can technically make a website social in some ways. So what exactly is social to you guys? All right. Third question, please. Oh. Hey, uh, Ben Parr of Mashable. Uh, just curious about um, if you if you intend or will add other partners, and if you're talking with anybody, anything of that sort. All right, that's good. So uh, the first question about what took us so long is, with the arrival of Zynga, and it exploded just about a year and a half ago, uh, we discovered that the applications on opportunity was going to be enormous, and that's when we set out to organize the fund. Uh, Bing brought together with great entrepreneurs a number of these companies I've just mentioned to you. Now, uh, Bing, how are we going to draw the line between social and mobile? I thought the question was how to draw the line between social and not social. 
And uh, I, would, I would say five years from now, if you don't have a lot of friends, you're not going to have any. Uh, so, social, not social. I think that uh, Mark Zuckerberg said it perfectly, that it's either, uh, you either build social ground up or you slap it on. In the video game business, we call it the slap on shovelware. And so I think we will, um, an entrepreneur who walks in with a shovel um, we'll probably have a shorter meeting than someone who walks in with uh, ground up new architecture. And then the third question was about intention, right? How do you intend this to develop over time? Bing, you want to take that? Start partners. Oh, oh partners. Um, we love partners. So um, uh, I, I suspect that um, I hope by this announcement that we're going to have people that we've been in discussions with. Um, call up and wonder how they can get on board. There are um, um, there are finance laws about how to add how to add new partners. Um, but as John said, it's a quarter of a billion dollar party. Let's get uh, let's get on board with all the great people we want to commune with to make cool new stuff. Let's do three more questions, please. Uh, microphone here, name, and then we'll go there and there. Hi, Larry Magid with CBS News. Hey. Um, you use the word social. Let's add the word social responsibility in terms of making sure the apps don't do things, not that this would ever happen, like leak data, or um, make sure that they're friendly to children and, um, you know, really respect the kinds of values that I know that everybody on this stage has talked a lot about in the past. How are you guys as investors going to make sure that the companies you invest in are carrying out those kind of ethical behaviors and, ca Great and also question. security? Another one in the back. We got Max. Go ahead. Hi, Patrick Hogue, Business Times. I am curious if all of these companies are putting cash into the fund, Inclu uh, we, in, we including that right away. The answer is yes. Next question. Uh, what, why didn't you just call it the F fund? Right, Richard Waters at the Financial Times. Why didn't you just call it the F fund? Presumably, Facebook's won it all. I mean, do you, is, is that the platform for social? And what about an A fund for Android and even a W fund for a Windows? A fund, W fund, Z fund. fund? Yeah. Uh, uh, next week, coming. the M fund. Okay, great question. Next question. Hi, for the, uh, the startups that are here right now, I mean, some of them, you know, you guys have already announced that you're investing in them. Are you announcing new investments in them or just sort of folding them into the EST fund? Great question. Let's take those three. So uh, the, the first was how about ensuring social responsibility? And we don't control any of the ventures we invest in. These CEOs run their businesses. But uh, certainly we agree with the folks on this platform and nearly all the Internet companies is that users ought to own their own data and how it is that uh, you create a great experience that at the same time is respectful of, of, of people's right to own their own data and their privacy. I think it's one of the great opportunities and challenge, honestly, that we have uh, uh, going forward. Uh, to the question of the F fund, this is actually not the FB fund. It is the S fund. Once again, we don't control these ventures. You, uh, but having said that, the Facebook social graph and network is the best place to go build broad-reaching applications to serve users. The third and final question was what, Bing? Oh, have, ha what have we invested in already? And, and the answer is one venture, and that's the one we announced today, which is Cafe Bots, these four PhDs out of Stanford. The other ones I named would have been in the S fund if, if we had the money when we did those. Instead, they're in uh, conventional Kleiner Perkins. Venture capital funds. How about three more questions? Name, microphone, let's roll. Back there, yes, sir. Um, hey, Fred Vogelstein at Wired. How are you guys? Just um, would you guys classify all of this as media investments or technology investments? Okay, thank you. Another question? Hi, Mark Hockman, PC Magazine. Um, just was wondering what sort of uh, monetization models you favored. I mean, there's subscriptions, there's virtual goods, there's ads, and so forth. I just didn't know if you guys had any preferences as far as the companies you find, what they do. Yep. Thank you. Another question? Who's got a mic? Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Mark Millian, CNN. Uh, Mark Pink has brought up an interesting point about uh, customer service, and I, I kind of wanted to throw that maybe so Mark Zuckerberg could talk a little bit about that, and Jeff Bezos, whose company is often associated with customer service. Okay, so I'd like to refer these as much as I can to the panel. Who would like to take the question of, is this, are these going to be media or technology innovations or Bing? Yes. I, I, think, I think any more content without technology is boring. Monetization models, who wants to take that? 
I think it's for you. I think the question was, <laughs> I don't think I can answer for you. What's your favor? You, you can advise them. <laughs> What's your advice about monetization models? Well, I'm the wrong person to ask because I'm, <laughs> You're the right person to ask. well, maybe I'm right. I, I personally believe that we are massively underinvested uh, across the board in what I call the user pay economy. And, and I think uh, th there's been, I think, a wrong assumption that we've built this first generation of web services on that you can uh, not offer enough value for users to pay themselves and that it has to be free with ads or just uh, an e-commerce transaction they would have done offline. And obviously, we believe in a model that is, that is supported by users, but I do not believe that that is just games and virtual goods. I think businesses like my wife's company, that they're also an investor in One King's Lane, I think there, there's a lot of newly created, valuable, digital-only services and products that I believe will be a much bigger economy in 10 years than the advertising economy on the internet. Great. So. And then there was a question about customer service. I don't recall. Was that I think for, it was for Facebook and Amazon. For, for, uh, I wasn't sure what the question was, though. The, the question, again, was <laughs> what, what are your insights? Yes, what positive, not positive. Do you like it? Customer service. I, I'm in favor of it. Yeah. Me too. I think it's a good it's a good feature, and um, <clears throat> uh, you know it's probably going to be different for every business, depending on you know if it's an advertising supported business. Perhaps customers may have different expectations about what. But when you start charging people for things, they have an expectation that they should get excellent customer service, and I think I think it's a good expectation. Well, so what specifically are you curious about? I mean, we, we offer customer service. We well, so a lot of what we do is just help people out with their accounts, right? They get locked out of their account for, for some reason. They lose their password. We try to help them recover that, right? Obviously, um, whether the service is paid or not, it's in our interests to make sure that we give everyone a great experience and make it so that they can use the site, right? So if they're having a hard time doing something, we want to enable them to do that. We want to do it with quick turnaround. Um, in terms of getting feedback from people, a lot of people write in, but I, I don't view that as customer support. Um, I view that as the job of the whole company to listen to feedback and incorporate that into our products. Great. Last three questions. We're going to close it down after this. Put your hand up. We'll get you a mic. And going once, going twice. Last question up here. Hi, uh, question for Jeff. Uh, there's been some reports that Amazon may be launching an app store on Amazon. I wanted to know if you had a comment. Uh, question about whether we're launching an app store, and you'll just have to stay tuned. Nothing I can tell you today. I had question uh, here. Laura Seidel from National Public Radio. Monetization of a lot of these. I mean, is this? Are you thinking these are largely going to be advertising based? I was kind of unclear. I think it came up briefly, but for social media, what is going to be the way to monetize it? Monetization. I mean, so, so our view, at least, is that there are going to be lots of different models. Right? I mean, we have an advertising model. We have a credits model. So we're trying to to help support the user pay economy that that Pincus was just talking about. Um, I mean, our fundamental view is that there are going to be these social versions of apps that get built out over the next five years or so that are probably going to be very disruptive in a lot of industries to existing apps. Um, and there are going to be lots of different ways to monetize that, you know, whether it's ads or credits or um, like one-time payments or subscriptions or whatever it is. I think people will fit the thing that is the most efficient and matches what, what their customers want for those specific industries. But um, the thing that we're unambiguous about is that pretty sure that, um, that in all these industries there are going to be new versions of these apps that are built that are social that deliver more value and are therefore able to monetize with whatever functional way they choose to do that better than their predecessors. Um, I, would, I would add one point that I think that, that before this new chapter there was actually an inverse relationship on the internet between engagement and monetization. An oddly inverse. That, that you go to Google and you're most impressed with how many nanoseconds it is that they served you what you were looking for and got you out of Google. And, and they make more money if you spend less time and you leave more often. 
And what I think is new about this chapter is I think the whole media business has struggled with how do you get people to quote unquote pay for content. And I think where this has gone to the next level beyond that is this isn't paying for content. This is getting people to see enough value where they're engaging and spending the majority of their time that there's some way that as a user you're ready to deliver value and it could be paying or it could be changing a purchase decision around Netflix or something like that. Um, but, but that's what I'm most excited about is that there's a way to go to a new depth of engagement and, and there's finally a way to have that line up with the monetization model. Thank you very much. So here's what we're going to do to uh, uh, move on with this quarter billion dollar party. I'd like to get a photo of uh, all the backers of this fund up front and uh, then we're going to uh, uh, close with a, a poem from Bing. Okay. <laughs> Bing, is, is, is this a prayer or a poem? We're about yeah, this is an invocation. This is called Hey Entrepreneurs. We are convened here today in the house that friends built, where the tipping point is already in full tilt, where brilliant devs at Facebook are told to be bold but rash, and everybody here likes to flash. I never thought I'd be on stage with Zuckerberg, Pincus, Bezos, and Dor. That sounds more like the name of a law firm, but it's actually where the internet is going toward. I don't have Zuckerberg or John Dor's genius. I don't have Pincus' intensity or Bezos' gigantic laugh. Hey, entrepreneurs, their help could be yours if you add them to your company's social graph. We're sitting on a quarter of a billion George Washingtons and our enthusiasm is unchecked. For the S Fund team to help you build your own internet treasure using AWS virtual goods and connect. There will be billions of people on social every day for their work, health, education, whatever they want to do. So entrepreneurs come build an awesome new company and maybe someday someone will make a movie about you too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Ben.